Yo, what's going on homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the OPTC video and in today's video the worldwide celebration has come to an end. We have all the information on the anniversary exclusives and some no new normal characters as well. So in today's video we're going to be doing our end game tier list. And what that means is we're taking all the legends in the game, putting them onto a tier list for you guys to help understand where they shine the most within the OPTC. As well as what characters you should be investing in and what characters you should be leveling up and what characters you should, you should be looking at summoning for to pick up for your account. Now, if you guys are a newer player watching this video, this is more sort of tailored towards endgame people. People that are playing stuff like the 10 Star Kazuna and Super Boss, stuff like uh, New World Treasure Map, as well as over level 100 for PKA. So, in today's video, I am going to take all the legends, put them on a tier list, like I said, and prioritize those three things. Now, I have been doing a lot of PvP stuff. Regular PvP tier list, Grand Voyage, tier, like all that kind of stuff. So, in today's video, I'm going to try not to include PvP as much, but it will still have a factor within sort of the higher echelons of characters. I have included a PvP tier on today's tier list, but I've also narrowed down a lot of the tiers as well because we are basically going to restart and put all the characters on today's tier list for you guys. So, it's going to be a bit of a long video. Um, so, I appreciate you guys for sticking it out to the end. If you do, make sure to belt the like button, hit the subscribe button. If you agree with anything, let me know in the comment section below. If you disagree, let me know as well, because uh, remember, this is just my opinion. Uh, playing the game for a very long time, but like I said, we're going to prioritize those three game modes, Treasure Map, Kazuna, and PK, as well as the rest of the game, but like the rest of the game can pretty much be clear with anything. And nowadays, we live in a boosted meta, so if I haven't used it within the last sort of six months, it's probably not going to rank super high on the tier list, but power, speed, accessibility, classes, colors, all that fun stuff is going to come into account. And with that said, let's build an end game tier list. All right, so as you can see, we have a blank tier list. And a big reason for me redoing really this is because, like I said, I wanted to, to break down some of these tiers, um, move away from some of like the extra tiers and stuff like that that I had. Plus, um, I wanted to sort of filter out some of the crap and sort of showcase all the legends in a sense of me actually moving them on a tier list. But as you guys can see here, we have a lot to work with today. Like, there is a lot of characters in the game, and one of the things with One Piece Treasure Cruise is that there are a lot of legends. Um, nowadays, like, rare recruits don't mean that much because it's always just going to be a legend that does it better or a legend that does it the best. So hopefully this tier list helps you guys out. Now, we have the top 10. This is going to be the top my top 10 best characters in the game. They will be in order. Next, we have meta, and the reason I have a meta tier is, is that these characters are working so well right now because maybe their class is the best class in the game or their color is the best class in the game. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are, like, insanely top 10 valuable, but they're sort of just, like, rocking the meta right now. Um, stuff like Freak Spirit characters, stuff like Psy characters, those types of units will see higher value. It's pretty much the same as what this amazing tier is. It's just that they are shining more right now because of the way that the classes are designed. Super subs, these characters are pretty much only used as substitute units or um, sailors. Um, they're, always, they're never really going to be a, a captain where your amazing characters kind of sh shine in both regards. Treasure map speedsters, these characters are basically just used to treasure map to make your runs a lot faster. Um, PvP, I have included the PvP tier, like I said, because... Um, PvP is like a prominent game mode, but like I said, I, I like to do my own PvP tier list stuff, so make sure to go check them out if you're looking for PvP options. Um, Grand Voyage only, you're pretty much only ever going to level up the character for Grand Voyage, but look, at the end of the day, like this is endgame, and Grand Voyage is one of those game modes that endgame players want to play. And in today's video, I am taking all characters at their maximum potential with their, the highest damage they can output, super tandem levels, final tap levels, rush levels, uh, level limit break, all that stuff. That's what we're taking into account. Support is basically just max out their support and then they just collect dust. That's basically it. And then never really use is going to be never really use. Obviously, they kind of shit. So, first of all, we've got Luffy. Like, nah, you're never going to use him. Same with this Lord. This Luchi has a good... No, he's actually trash. Uh, Robin, you're never going to use. Izo Kiku is a treasure map speedster. Their wave clearing shenanigans and then the three turn chain lock is very, very good. This Usopp can be used in Grand Voyage, but like, you don't ever really, really want to use him too much. Same with um, Frankie nowadays. Like, Frankie's got a very interesting mechanic where he can um, give you um, attack down removal and burn removal as a captain, uh, which can be good for PKA, but most of the time as an endgame player, you're going to use him for PKA. Same with Brook. Um, he's fantastic in um, Low Town when you are versing Buggy. Um, Yorog, look, I'm going to put Yorog in PvP because, like, he needs to go somewhere. 
Um, but like honestly, like I mainly just use your rogue for a support, so he, he can do some stuff in PvP though. As for X Drake, um, honestly, man, X Drake's kind of like a never really used character. I use him for his support more than anything. Um, but like he can work. I think he's just a product that like powerhouse units and striker units don't see that much play. And like I said, I haven't used this character in well over six months. So Kuzan, Kuzan's good in PvP. Um, falling off, but like really only used in PvP. Same with Luffy nowadays. Luffy's a very, very good character. Um, but nowadays, like you're really only ever using this unit in PvP. Um, there's just better Luffy's. That's that's the bottom line. As for this Kaido, like I only ever use this Kaido as support nowadays. Um, once upon a time, he was fantastic. He still is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. But as an end game player, like you're rarely going to use this unit. I, I I don't honestly don't think I've used this character in well over a year. So yeah. As for um Ace and Yamato, Ace and Yamato are still the shining light of that particular anniversary. Um. They're an ace and a Yamato, which is a huge benefit to them. Obviously, they have other ace and Yamatos they have to compete with. But the benefit of having ace and Yamato means they work with Roger and um, Odin, as well as then having the Yamato component for Zoro Sanji. So that's what makes them so damn good. Um, you can squeeze them on a team. We actually used them last Super Boss, um, and they, they helped us get a monstrous amount of damage with their chain boundary and their um, conditional boost. Waifus, nowadays waifus, I'm pretty much only using the waifus as support. They honestly would make an argument for me as a super sub. Um, their attack down rule paralysis move was very, very good, um, but mainly I'm using them for their supports. Kind of, you're never really going to use him. Smoothie is a demon in PvP. If you guys have seen that new PvP team, like Smoothie goes really, really hard. This Blackbeard's good in PvP too. Sasaki's got a really good support. Black Marie's got a good support, and so does Who's Who. Um, Katakuri, um, very, very good in Grand Voyage, like a fantastic Grand Voyage option. Um, Hiori is another really good option for Grand Voyage, like, you, you basically need to max her out, uh, for the one at Arlong Park, but she is a super sub. She's also a treasure map speed star, like, this particular character, honestly, for me, uh, probably would sit up here in, like, the meta tier. Um, like, she's so good, like, ridiculously good. Um, she works so good for, um, what's his name? King of Hell Zoro as well. Um, but like, you're never using her as a captain, she's always going to be a substitute unit, and she's always going to be something that, like, is definitely very, very good for most players. Uh, Uta. Uta's going to go up into meta, just because, like, Cerebrals are kind of coming back at the moment, and Strikers are still fantastic. Uta having, um, Special Bind, so Special Reverse and Paralysis removal in a captain is so good, and then the Song buff not affecting Interrupt is just so powerful. Chopper, another super sub, um, he does... Uh, bind, Despair, Removal, he does Healing, and he does Resistance, which is crazy. Um, Shiki, you're never really going to use. Shanks, honestly, nowadays, like, I'm only ever using Shanks as a support, which, like, hurts my soul. But, here we are. Um, ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, honestly, never really going to use. This Luffy, you're never really going to use. Sop Sop, though, is an incredible sub. Uh, I know lots of people use Sop Sop recently for the Super Boss. Um, gives you a lot of damage output, man. Like, a lot of damage output with the um, Resistance down. Um, they give the guaranteed conditional boost. They're just a very, very good substitute unit. Very, very good. Sabo, um, I think Sabo's got a pretty good support, but that's about it. Top Musica really is a Grand Voyage beast. Um, you're really only going to use her pretty much in Grand Voyage stages that require the Driven and the Powerhouse. Um, this Blackbeard is also fantastic in uh, Grand Voyage at Logetown versus Luffy, I believe. Um, the one where you need to bring a buggy unit. Uh, Corazon and Law, you're never really going to use them. Same with Hina. Um, uh, what's his name? Ace is a treasure map speed star. The ability to remove special bind and special reverse is absolutely elite. Same with, um, KDAD. Their ability to remove attack down is so fantastic. However, like, they're so good because slashes are just so fantastic. Um, their final tap is one of the best in the game. Their, um, attack down removal and captain is incredible. They're an attack booster. They, um, have a super class and slashes at the moment are just, like, one of the best classes in the game. So, like, they have to go up into... Towards the top 10. Orochi, look, he's a PvP legend, so I guess we put him in PvP, but, like, we're here. Same with this Zoro. He's pretty much only used in PvP nowadays, but you can use him as a treasure map speed star if you want to do some wave clear shenanigans. This kid is great for P uh, for treasure map. Um, having the ability to get super bombs um, to avoid those nasty shenanigans is great. This big mom's pretty much only using Grand Voyage. Honestly, this page one you're never ever going to use. Same with Jinbei, man. Like, oh, Jinbei, like, he's okay. But, like, nowadays, you're not really going to use him. This, um, Boa, she's not bad in PvP. Chopper is another super sub. He's kind of falling off a lot, but, like, a lot of players can still use the, the potential that Chopper has. Roger is absolutely amazing. 
Roger's so close to being meta, in my opinion, but, like, I'm going to put him in Amazing for now. Um, he's a free spirit slash a side unit, so, like, he, he fits the bill for meta. But there's just better Rogers nowadays, which is kind of crazy to say. Nami is definitely a meta character. Honestly, she probably will make her way into the top 10. But Strikers, Free Spirit, Psy units, they're all fantastic. She just absorbs Paralysis. She has base stats and a chain boost. She still has the best best Super Tandem in the game. Like, she's absolutely phenomenal. Robin, um, another meta character, mainly for her damage output. Um, if you can squeeze her onto a PKA team, uh, or if you're going to squeeze her onto a super boss team, she's going to be one that is just absolutely fantastic. But nowadays, I find that she's probably on par with something like Sob Sob. Um, but again, Cerebrals are coming back. She's a very, very good character. Um, and you guys know how big her damage output is. Sugar, look, Sugar can be used in PvP, but nowadays, I think she's fallen off so drastically. Whitebeard, Whitebeard has actually has a pretty good support, 50% damage reduction, which works great for like the damage reduction buff. Um... This, uh, Rayleigh Gaban is fantastic. Any unit that can remove attack down in their captain ability is so god tier. Um, except for, like, Frankie Tanky nowadays, because Frankie Tanky has this weird captain stuff, and, yeah, he's just used for Grand Voyage. But this, um, Rayleigh Gaban is so, so strong when you partner him up with something like Roger. Like, the two of these together, the units together, man, they go to the absolute moon. As for this Luffy, he's still absolutely amazing. Um, very, very good attack boost or all boost for free spirit characters, which is great. Uh, this Uta is just an absolute demon. Um, very similar to this Uta, but I find that the 6-star is probably the best out of the three Uta combinations. Perispera, honestly, never really going to use. Cat Viper and Dogstorm 6 Plus is a Grand Voyage demon. Uh, Ace has a good support, I guess. We'll put him there. Luffy, Luffy's actually a super sub for me. I use Luffy quite a bit. Uh, purely for the 5 turn all boost, so that way you get around something like Intimidation. He has, gives you a chain shenanigans too, which is kind of nice, but um, yeah. Um, Sabo... Sabo's sub potential is actually pretty good, mainly because of the special one removal, uh, and he's a chain boundary unit. If you have a chain boost, he's three turns too, which is really, really good. Next, we got Shanks Crew. Shanks Crew is pretty much Grand Voyage only now. He's kind of dropped off a lot in PvP. He's still good in PvP, but like his main shine is is in Grand Voyage. Killer, you're never really going to use. Same with uh, Hawkins. Apu is pretty good in PvP still. Um, he's definitely better than your Rogue, um, but nowadays, I don't really run that team. Uh, Julie Bonnie, no, you can use Bardo Cavendish in PvP, but they've dropped off so much. Um, Jack is a pretty good sub, mainly because the Tesoro ship is still so friggin' good. He was attacked down and bind, but he gives you two turns of a chain boundary, and if you use the Tesoro ship at max mods, level 12, you can actually extend that to a three-turn chain boundary, which is ridiculously strong. Luffy Yamato, I'm gonna put Luffy Yamato in Amazing. Again, they, they're a product of just being a, a Luffy or a Yamato unit. Um, they're not bad, it's just they have so much competition. Um, I still find this unit absolutely insanely good, honestly, like, to the point where, like, I'm actually gonna move them to meta. Um, they boost the colors, and then they also do stuff with free spirit, so, like, there's not, there's not much else not to like about that. Next, we've got Odin and Toki. Odin and Toki are a super sub, purely because slashes are so good right now. They can remove despair and paralysis, they get color affinity and slasher resistance. Honestly, I'm gonna move them up into amazing. Um... Purely because of Zora Sanji. Zora Sanji can make everyone slashes, which means that 50% goes to the goddamn fucking moon. Um, Rush Sanji, absolute meta unit. Uh, fantastic option. One of the best rushes in the game. Like, he just, he's phenomenal. Queen, Queen's sub, sub potential kind of has dropped a lot. Um, but we did use him in the latest Super Boss. Um, he's very, very good uh, as a color affinity buffer uh, for Driven. Zoro, definitely going to move his way up, up into meta. This unit is so good in PvP. Um, fantastic unit. For Super Boss, fantastic unit for 10 star Kazuna. Um, really, really good for PKA options as well if you see that damage limiter pop up. Next, we've got King. King's probably the best of the three Beast Pirates. I was on Team Queen until the nerf, but look, King and his ability to just get around uh, very annoying shenanigans when Driven is buffed. Um, like, right now, he should actually work really, really well for the for the latest 10 star. This Big Mom, she's fantastic in Grand Voyage, but that's about it. Even Kobe you're never going to use. Uh, Shanks Buggy, another Grand Voyage monster. They're really good in PvP too. Um, but, like, you can use them across the board for, like, two Grand, Vo uh, Grand Voyages, which is great. Croc Dofi, you're never going to use them. Um, Luffy and Ace. Honestly, man, Luffy and Ace is so good. We used Luffy and Ace recently in the latest Super Boss, uh, which was so funny. Uh, against Dex on a Gear 5 team. We used Gear 5 Frank Captain, but, um, yeah, the sub potential that you can do with this unit, giving an attack boost for two turns or an orb boost, Chain Boundary and a Conditional Boost. Man, they're, they're, he, like, they're so good. Like, they're ridiculously good. The problem is, obviously, you have to compete with a Luffy. Uh, but if you're using, like, Gear 5 Friend Captain, not bringing a Luffy knife as your own, they work great. Plus, they trigger the Roger and Odin um, rush 
which is awesome. And they're the Luffy unit that you need for um, the Super Town of Zora, which is just Zora Sanji, sorry, which is fantastic. Robin Koala, um, definitely a PvP character. Like, one of the better PvP characters. They've grown on me so much in how powerful they are in a Free Spirit and a Cerebral team. Black Marine and Ulti, though, they kind of suck. Um, Karen and Nami, they're a great sub option. Um, purely because of their special one removal and their swap removing that. Um, they can do a lot of damage with the Chain Boundary as well. Um, so they're quite good. Nami and Robin, uh, I'm going to put them in PvP because they still work very, very well in Grand Voyage. This particular um, trio unit is kind of good with their support, but that's about it. Uh, Izo is never going to use. Uh, Kawamatsu is a great bench option for PvP. Then we have the Gear 5s. You bet your ass you know that they're going to end up in the top 10. So, like, let's put them there now. Where they're going to sit in the top 10 is beyond them. Whether you guys say that this 6 plus is better than the 6 star, that's fine with me. Bind and Special Bind Removal is... A special rewind it removal is crazy. Spare removal, going through defensive effects. The two of them together just do absolute bits. They're so good for every single piece of game mode in the game. Next, we've got um, Momo. Momo's going to go into meta. Meta, like, Momo's so good for PK. It's like, it's not even funny. Plus, he's so good for 10-star Kazuna. Like, it's not even funny. And, um, hell, if you, we have it in Super Boss, I'm sure he'd work great against the Super Boss as well. So, uh, fantastic unit. You can use him in Treasure Map. He's very slow. Uh, but, you know, we move. Uh, Reiju, never gonna use Zora, uh, sorry, Sanji and Zora, no, Sanji and Judge can be used in Grand Voyage, but they're not like a go-to Grand Voyage character. Um, Lid, or, uh, Law and Kid, honestly, I'm gonna put them in Super Sub, they've dropped off so much, I only ever use this character as Sub, I could not tell you the last time I used this character as a Captain, there's nothing beneficial about them as a Captain, um, great in Grand Voyage though, which is awesome, but yeah. Um, Big Mom, Big Mom is, oh man, I put Big Mom in meta because she is like a go-to powerhouse slash driven leader. There's a couple of others that we're going to talk about, but like she is a go-to monster. Color affinity with her super EX as well as, um, the double stacking conditional, which is great. Kaido, he's probably the best option as a powerhouse captain though. Um, his end of turn damage, his cooldowns, all that fun stuff is really, really good. Uh, he's got an amazing rush ability. He's just... A phenomenal character. There's not much to say about Kaido. Kanjuro, though, you're never really going to use Kanjuro. Like, he's so niche. Like, so funny, but, like, you're never really going to use him. Grand Voyage only. Marco. I mean, you... No, you actually can't. You can't use him. Uh, Marco and uh, Whitebeard are great for Grand Voyage against Smoker. I did see them used in uh, Arlong Park as well, I believe. Uh, this Uta, she's actually so good. She's a free spirit character, which makes her amazing. She gets around so much special wine, man. Like, so much special wine. It's ridiculous. Uh, plus, she's like color affinity and a attack booster, I believe. Um, Kazara Fuji, look, they're good in PvP, but you're never really going to use them. Tesoro, this Tesoro is an absolute monster in PvP. Special one and special reverse removal if you have all classes, but mainly it's PvP. Nami Karina, um, look, Nami, Nami Karina work just everywhere. Like PvP, treasure map, um, PK, uh, Kazuna, like this unit goes crazy. They have this, the limit break that gives them the cells cooldown. So basically, it doesn't matter if they're boosted or not. You can use them literally everywhere in the game, which is crazy. Ein, Zeph, you're never really going to use. Who else we got here? Category Oven, you're never really going to use. Um, Shanks. This Shanks, honestly, nowadays, is just PvP. It kind of sucks to say that, but like, same with the Luffy as well. As an endgame player, like, most of the time, you're going to use both of them in PvP. I do think the Luffy has more potential outside of... The game mode because of his final tap and because of his um, ability to be either an attack booster or a chain boundary unit. So for me, I'm going to put Luffy in amazing. I, I do think Shanks is just PvP nowadays. He's definitely not bad though. Like he's definitely not a bad unit and can definitely make his way up into these this echelons. But nowadays, like if you're running like a side team, like very rarely you're going to have Shanks on it because Gear Five exists. So kind of is what it is. Kobe though, Kobe's the same. Kobe was kind of cool, but like his gimmicks are nice with the captain swap. It's super niche, but like. He's the go-to for um for PvP. Honestly, this Azora is so good in treasure maps, treasure map as well. That I, I kind of have to give him some love up there in treasure map. Next, we've got um Stampede Luffy. He is definitely a treasure map speedster. Despair and paralysis removal, attack down removal. Now he's fantastic for treasure map. Momo is an absolute beast in PvP. Um, he does good damage with his final tap buff though as a sub. Um, for free spirit and slasher characters, and remember, like the, the two of those are just so strong right now. He's the chain boundary unit for the team. Uh, he has some utility in his kit as well, which is really really nice. As for the Hiori, though, I don't think the Hiori is nearly as good as what the um, the Momo is. I have Hiori, and I've never really used her, so I'm going to put her down here. Raizo Shinobu, one of the best PvP units in the entire game. They are so friggin' good. Green Bull, honestly, never really going to use. Atama, never really going to use. Shanks, um. 
Shanks is really good in PvP versus side teams. Uh, he's a fantastic option for side teams. He's actually really good for uh, treasure map as well because you can get like three turn buffs with him. Uh, but I feel like most of the time you can use him in PvP. Next we got Roger and Odin, one of the best rush characters in the game. Any character that has rush obviously is going to find their way up the top here because rush is still so limited. Um, again, slashes right now are just ruling the meta and this unit is the best rush character for them. Plus they are one of the best captains for them too. Attack boosting, orb boosting, despair removal, they're very, very good. This Yamato um, as well for super boss Kazuna and like doing damage. This Yamato is one of the best. She can give so much cooldowns as well, which makes her really good for speed farming um, in uh, PK and stuff like that. But most of the time she's going to be seen in um, high damage situations. She has binary removal too, which means she works really, really well in um, treasure map too, which is great. Zora Sanji, you know, bet your ass you know Zora Sanji is going to make their way into the top 10. Uh, I don't know where, but like this unit works great everywhere. Grand Voyage, 10 star Kazuna, Super Boss. 10 star Kazuna. Um, did I say 10 star? I said 10 star Kazuna twice, you know. PKA, like everywhere you want to take this unit, this unit shines. Um, they've got one of the best switches in the game. They've got um, incredible special ability. They turn everyone into slashes, which is the most unique ability and makes you just be able to run like literally anything under a slasher build team. Uh, this law, honestly, this law is actually really good. Um, I'm going to put him in amazing for now. He's a slasher booster, but um, he works absolutely exceptionally with um, this particular Yamato. Just because he applies increased damage taking, the Yamato then increases it, which is actually so friggin' broken. As for this Ace, um, this Ace has the potential to be amazing. Um, however, the downside to the unit is that he does a 99% HP cut. Um, it, it's just a shame, man. It's just a shame that he does that. But any character that does two, uh, two conditionals, like, I can't go against that. As for this Luffy, oh, man, this Luffy's actually pretty good. He gives a lot of special bind. Where'd I put, um, where'd I put Uta? Wherever this Uta is, this Luffy has to go. The downside to this Luffy is his name's Luffy, um, but he works great in Grand Voyage. Um, he has special bind removal in his kit and his uh, super type, which is very, very good. Plus, he's a guaranteed conditional boost, which is great too. This Kaido is a monster in PvP. You can use him in stuff like Grand Voyage, but this guy is your PvP demon. Like, he, he has to be in PvP. As for Lilith, Lilith, I honestly, like, hasn't, like, Lilith hasn't sort of impressed me as much as I thought she would. I, I still think there's a lot more to come with Lilith. And as we've seen with a lot of these other cerebral boosters, I think she's ready to shine. So I'm going to put her in the back end of Amazing and see how we go. As for Bonnie though, Bonnie is just disgusting, man. Bonnie's so good. The weakening effect has just been proven to be like one of the most powerful abilities in the game. Um, plus she's free spirit, so she goes on free spirit teams. And as a captain, she can do some really, really cool stuff too. As to this Boa, like this Boa, she's okay. Um, she's more of a sub base unit. She can be a chain bounty, she can be an attack basing base unit. Um, she does weird stuff with love, love, and all that crap. But um, like at the end of the day, no one really cares. Um, Rayleigh, Rayleigh's pretty good. I'm gonna put him in treasure map pizza because he can go through. Um, Defensive effects, plus he has the attack down removal in his uh, captain kit, which is very, very good. As for Blackbeard, oh man, I feel like Blackbeard is another one that's going to be a treasure map speedster. Blackbeard's amazing, but he's so finicky to team build for, because if you don't have the four classes, the threshold ability doesn't give you the increased damage taken, then you need to bring like Burgess for like, like making orbs. I feel like Blackbeard is just going to fall off. Except for in Treasure Map where you just go through defensive effects. Or if you just want to build driven powerhouse teams and not worry about that. But at the end of the day, he's then only a five times captain. And like that's kind of lackluster. So for me, he's kind of just a Treasure Map speed. So honestly, Burgess, Burgess has crazy sub potential. Um, and the reason I say that is because there's no other driven character in the game that can be an attack booster and remove attack down. Which is just kind of nuts. So uh, he's a very, very good sub. He can remove attack down and he's sub it and if you have a driven base team like i feel like he's gonna be on it he's so good for grand voyage as well which is really good the one with the fighters s hawk is the best pvp like legend in the game has to go into pvp tier like there's no doubt about it cross guild um cross guild seem really really good as well i put them in super subs mainly because their kit is just so built around that set target damage as a captain you can do stuff with it however um their EX being double class is great, but their captain only gives the six times to themselves or cost of 40 or less. So to me, like that's that's a huge drawback to the unit. It's like losing that captain ability at six times. So for me, I feel like you're only going to really use him as a sub. But I mean, look, as as a captain, he does work well too. Um, just because like you can get that cooldown back so frequently. But like the problem is villain characters, man. Villain characters just suffer in this game, man. 
It is what it is, though. We'll put him in super subs for now. Toby Repo. Toby Repo ass, man. Like, you're never going to use them. Like, honestly, like, they have a good support, actually. We'll put them there. Arlong Crew. Um, you have to bring them in Grand Voyage. Then you don't have a choice um, for the Arlong Park fight. Next, we got Odin, an absolute PvP demon. That's pretty much the only place you're going to use Odin. Uh, I do want to save the new characters to last. Um, Cat Dog are absolute Grand Voyage weapons. Um, very good for speed farming, but nowadays, like, we're talking endgame here. You guys have cleared everything already, right? Whitebeard is a fantastic Grand Voyage option. Um, same with the Verse Blackbeard. He's pretty much... I love this Verse Blackbeard, man, but, like, I couldn't tell you last time I used him. Like, it's just... It's... It is what it is. This Big Mom, you're never going to use. This Boa is an absolute demon in Grand Voyage against Buggy. This Boa sucks. This Sabo sucks. This, um, Usopp, he's pretty good for his Grand Voyage as well. This Luffy is a very good Grand Voyage option for his Grand Voyage, obviously. Um, Rayleigh is... Honestly, nowadays, Rayleigh sort of mainly uses Grand Voyage options. He's a really good sub, though. Like, you, you can still use Rayleigh as a sub. Um, but nowadays, like, with endgame, like, boxes, you don't ever really go towards Rayleigh. He's more of just your Grand Voyage character. Um, Carrot, Treasure Map Speedster for sure. Very, very good at getting through defensive effects, obviously. Um, she has a lot of cooldowns, too, which is really, really nice. Um... Versa Kino and Versa Ace. Look, Versa Kino will, will still put in PvP, but nowadays I don't really use a Kino. I know a lot of people do, but um, I don't really use him. Kuzan is an absolute demon when it comes to treasure map spaces. Um, wave clearing, giving an attack boost, giving an orb boost on the final stage is really, really good. Um, this Hody is also a really, really good treasure map character, um, just for like wave clearing stages. Jinbei, really good in Grand Voyage um, against the Beriate. Ace. Honestly, Ace you never going to use. I don't even use him with Grand Voyage. It, honestly, this Shanks nowadays you're never really going to use. This Lucha you're never going to use. Um, this Law Crocodile. Bardo's got one of the best supports in the game with the Paralysis removal. This Bardo, actually, you have to bring in Grand Voyage. Like, you pretty much don't have a choice. Um, Frankie Tanky has fallen off the moon because of his nerf. Same with cat, like these cat dog characters. This Dofi has a fantastic support. Actually, cat, um, cat Viper's support is absolutely elite with the attack down removal. Uh, Kizaru still holds his own in PvP because Lashes are still so friggin' good. Buggy's good in Grand Voyage, but honestly, like, nowadays, like, Buggy's just a support character. There's so many other Buggies you'd rather use. Um, this Luffy... <laughs> funny enough, they made this Luffy, re like, re uh, relevant, and he has to be brought in Grand Voyage. Like, you just, again, you don't have a choice. Um, this Tesoro, um, for Grand Voyage strats is great, but, like, I just had to put another one in there for support. Um, this Law has a very good support. This Zoro has a very good support. Magellan is pretty much on his stats. Corazon, he's basically only ever used for his support nowadays if you're an endgame player. Katakuri is a big no. You're a big no. Sorry, Animal Rules, OPTC, he's a no as well. Big Mom's kind of whatever. Fuji's kind of whatever. Oh, actually, is this a Fuji that's good for Grand Voyage? Yeah, there's one of them that's really good for Grand Voyage and the other one that's sort of dog water. Um, Nami is a must bring for Grand Voyage. You just have to bring her for hers. You don't have a choice. Uh, Shiroshi Manchuri. I'm going to bring Shiroshi Manchuri up into uh, Super Subs. They're going to be the back end of super subs, but the ability to just remove the pain debuff and all those other very annoying debuffs that don't have other ways of removing them, unless you're talking Boa. Um, the special limit, the chain, if you're below, we used it for the treasure, uh, the super boss. They're just a fantastic character to have for that. Shirohoshi, um, treasure map speedster with the rainbow orbs. Uh, very, very good sub potential if you are looking for treasure map options. Um, Kaido nowadays, no... Um, this Stampede Luffy I forgot to take off. This Luffy's got a great support for color affinity with shooters. Uh, Sober Mask. I don't think I've ever used Sober Mask in like recent times except for as a support with the 1.3 times attack. Cavendish has a good support. 1.5 times attack and orbs. Um, Nami Robin I forgot to take off. Marco you have to bring for Grand Voyage now. Um, the Fighter and Quick One is an absolute terror. Um, you're never going to use Sabo Koala. Akainu's support's still good for strength teams. Sabo, you're never really going to use him. Luffy, you're never really... Oh, like, this Luffy's good for uh, Grand Voyage, I suppose. Um, he, he's definitely very, very good. This Luffy's better for Grand Voyage. Um, but either or, it's going to work for the strength fighter one. Uh, Whitebeard, you have to bring for Grand Voyage against Smoker, I believe. Well, the one where you need to bring Smoker. It's Kuzan, no. Uh, honestly, Mihawk Prono nowadays, no. You, I, I'll put them in Grand Voyage because like they, they're still fantastic. With um, the Kuma support, but like, yeah, nowadays it's kind of whatever. Um, Sanji's still a character you basically have to bring for the Grand Voyage at Beriate. Same with this Mihawk, you kind of have to bring him for the fight against Zoro, I believe it is. Um, 
Judge, no. Sengoku's got a good support. Uh, two times attack to whatever character he goes on. Honestly, Vivi Rebecca nowadays, no. Um, they can work great just to remove, like, insane amounts of damage reduction and defense up. But nowadays, you just either set defense to zero or you just, like, go through it with characters like Blackbeard. Um, this Smoker, unfortunately, you, you just have to bite the bullet. You have to bring Smoker. He, he's, like, a must-bring. Um, Halloween Shanks is... Honestly, you're never really going to use Halloween Shanks. You, you can use him in Grand Voyage, but that doesn't mean that you will. Um, Moria is still fantastic in PvP. Very, very good PvP unit. Very, very good, actually. Uh, Luffy and Sanji, you're never going to use. No, nope. Nope. Big time nope. Uh, nope. This Black is actually pretty good. No, you're not going to use you. Who else? Sanji Pudding, you're never really going to use. This kid, you're never going to use. Um, honestly, I guess you could argue to me that he's still okay in PvP. Like... Not really, but like he, he's still okay. Zoro and uh, Luffy need a six plus so bad. Katakuri's whatever. Komarasaki's whatever. Um, this Sabo you basically have to bring for that same Grand Voyage with these two units. The the quick fighters one is just it's an absolute nightmare. This Zoro, um, yeah, look, I think you pretty much have to bring him for Grand Voyage as well. Um, just like the the Mihawk fight. This Boa, another really good Grand Voyage character, one you kind of have to bring against Smoker if you are running that Luffy team. Bullet, fantastic for Grand Voyage or Alveda's hideout. Like, the level limit break and 6 plus a bullet is just... It makes that fight so easy. Katakuri is very, very good for um, the Grand Voyage at Logetown versus Luffy, I believe. Uh, Hawkins has a good support, actually. We're going to put Hawkins up here in support. Um, this Fuji, I feel like, is the one that I'm thinking about, but we're going to put him there anyway. Uh, Rayleigh definitely is a great Grand Voyage character. Needs to br be brought for Arlong Park. Um, Garp basically has to come to Arlong Park as well for the opposite sort of fight. The one where you have to bring Arlong. This is for the one they have to bring Nami. Um, Mihawk and Law, both exceptional Grand Voyage characters for actually multiple of the Bariate fights. We have to bring Int Slashes. They're very, very good. Again, you're going to have to bite the bullet eventually. This one of Law, um, still very, very good in PvP when you are, are versing, um, Powerhouse and Driven teams. Honestly, he just kind of goes on the side team regardless purely because of the cooldown reductions that he can give, uh, which is very, very nice. This Sabo is actually really, really good in Grand Voyage for Syrup Village, uh, when we are talking mono shooters. Uh, Cracker is a fantastic PvP character, but is also very, very good for Grand Voyage. Um, he's not really essential for, for Grand Voyage. I think he's probably a little bit better in PvP than what his actual use in Grand Voyage is. Um, this Blackbeard, you can use him in Grand Voyage, but no. Um, this law shouldn't even be here. Komarasaki is a pretty good Grand Voyage character, actually, so I'll give her... Credit where credit is due. Uh, this Marco, another good Grand Voyage character for Bariate with the Powerhouse team. Enel, um, with the PvP update, he's actually very, very good in PvP. You can use him as a bench character, which means that um, he, he's very, very nice for that. Uh, Reiju, no. Vivi, actually, Reiju, Vivi supports are actually elite. So we're going to put them up here. Uh, attack boosting for Cerebrals, orb boosting for Cerebrals, as long as they rotate orbs. And Free Spirit, I believe. Zoro, um, really good treasure map speedster. Um, mainly because he special gives two turns of cooldown and he's a wave clearer. So that works really, really well for like stuff like stage one. Um, this Mihawk is a big old no. Nami support, sending defense to zero for Kinemon and Sanji. Very, very good. This Sanji's ass. Um, this Miguel is ass. Honestly, fire tank pirates are pretty ass nowadays. Bonnie's support is okay. Um, it's not super essential. I think he gives cooldown on the final stage. This Sanji though has a really good support. I guess you could probably might say he's a treasure map speedster to me, but like, nah. Queen, exceptional in Grand Voyage for the Arlong Park fight. We need to bring powerhouse characters. However, King uh, is pretty much only ever used as a support unit, so it is what it is. Jumanji, oh, not Jumanji, um, Sanji and, what are they? The German batch. Uh, Toki, very, very good for uh, treasure map. Nowadays, pretty much all I use Toki for is treasure map. However, still a very, very good super sub uh, if you want to get around some annoying debuffs. Kizaru, honestly, you're never really going to use Kizaru. Yamato, this Yamato, you're never really going to use her either. This Yamato, um, she's still really good with the bind removal. But I feel like PvP is really the only place I use this Yamato nowadays. If, I'm, if I need bind removal, I'm going to be bringing like, the new Yamato, to be honest. So, And Luffy Yamato is a thing too, so it is what it is. The Beast Pirates and Kaido are fantastic for treasure map speeding. Um, basically just sort of wave clearing with the treasure map speedsters. Um, Brook, man, Brook, you kind of have to give some love to, right? Like, Brook and his, uh, Brook and his revival ability is kind of nuts. Um, I would put him in niche if I still had the niche tier. 
Um, but I guess... Yeah, look, I guess you're never really going to use him as an endgame player, so, like, let's be real. Um, Superclass Dofi, you're really never going to use him. Katakuri support is very, very good. Doflamingo has actually got a fantastic support goes on any driven character. Kind of overlooked that. Bon Clay, never really going to use Bon Clay. Um, Robin and Jinbei are still a super sub. I still use them so frequently, especially for, like, PKA uh, and Kazuna 10 stars. This unit shines the most. Like, the cooldowns, damage reduction, threshold removal is very, very nice. Carrot Wanda. Um, Carrot Wanda are just fantastic. But I feel like nowadays they're just a Grand Voyage master. Um, that's pretty much the only time I use them. Because, like, arenas, um, coliseums, clashes are just all non-existent. And we live in a boosted meta, right? Like, we don't need the cooldowns anymore. So, it's a shame. But um, Carrot Wanda have just fallen off for a product of a meta, meta shift. Um, Crocodile, no... Usopp, Nami, you can use in Grand Voyage, but I'm not going to include them because, like, fuck that. Um, Jack is a fantastic PvP character. Uh, everyone knows how good Jack is. He's still actually a staple on most people's strength teams. Hawkins, no. Garp, honestly, even PvP, no. Do I have this Jack, this, this Jack twice? I think I have this Jack twice. Uh, Rush, that card, I don't know. This Lucy, no. Marco, I, I feel like you got to give Marco some love purely because of um, and being an XP captain. Nowadays, though, with Momo being a thing, he's just honestly fallen off. And most of the time, you're probably just going to use Momo. Whitebeard, um, he is good for Grand Voyage. That's about it. Versus Whitebeard, nothing really else to say about him. Same with Versus Shanks. Uh, if you are looking at local sea monster, Versus Shanks is going to be one of those guys that you want to go to. Um, Kinden. Kinden are actually still really good. Again, any unit that has the 50% slasher resistance is just so good because Zora Sanji can just make everybody slashes, which is just unfair when you have 50% slasher resistance. It's kind of crazy. Kumar is just like a go-to PvP unit for a bench on a strength team now. That's not PvP. This is PvP. Um, the 20 cost update just made so many characters so damn good. Big Mom, look, honestly, you're never really going to use her. Sengoku, you're never really going to use. Um, Zora Sanji, you're never really going to use. Doflamingo, fantastic PvP unit. Um, honestly, I'm just gonna, like, do this for a second, because I know for a fact that most of the time, um, it can sort of stuff up when I scroll, so, Blackbeard, fantastic PvP unit, like, absolutely demonic in PvP, um, Roger and Whitebeard, honestly, nowadays, like, for an endgame player, like, you're really only ever using this character in, in PvP, um, it's just a shame. Odin, fantastic in PvP as well. Kid is a great PvP unit, like, terrific PvP character. Um, and that's basically it for PvP um, units. Other characters you're really never going to use. Honestly, Pudding, great sub potential, but you're never really going to use her. Um, V2, VV, Becca are just phenomenal in Grand Voyage. Um, you just pretty much have to bring them. Um, so it kind of is what it is. But um, unfortunately... You just, you just have to do it. This Lucha, you're never really going to use. Wipe it, honestly. Like, he's great for the blow away stuff, but, like, never really going to use him. Um, Yamato is actually still meta. Like, Yamato versus Yamato is still so good uh, for her ability to give the damage reduction uh, buff. She gives attack buff. Like, she just, she's really, really good, man. Like, she's really, really good. Um, Page 1 ulti, you're never really going to use. Even Koala, like, this Straw Eye Crew, you're never going to use. Perona, you're never really going to use. Shiroshi Mancherry V2. Um, look, they can be used. Uh, I believe a lot, someone used them in Grand Voyage. So we'll put them up here in Grand Voyage. Law is an absolute demon in Grand Voyage. But that's pretty much the only place you're going to use him nowadays. Uh, look, he's actually still like an absolutely amazing character though. Like He's super tandem, still one of a kind. Um, healing, attack boosting, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but like I said, I'm trying to be ruthless here. So like, I uh, apologize if I go over some stuff and you guys are like, Yo, Sam, how did you do that to a unit? Um, Grand Voyage only, we've got uh, Ulti, definitely very, very good there. This Kaido, this Kaido's okay. Um, I don't think he's amazing, though, nowadays. Um, but, like, yeah, just, you're never really going to use him. You kind of have to go out of your way to use him. Next, we've got Sabo and Ace. Sabo and Ace are just fantastic across the board. I still think Sabo Sub, uh, and Ace hold their own in, like, so many different game modes. Um, however, they have sort of fallen off quite a bit, in my opinion, yeah. Um, scrolling back down, apologies if it's gone all crazy. Next, we've got Strike Crew. Strike Crew are uh, another just absolutely metal unit. Their final type is just so fantastic. The only downside is that we have so many Strikes up here, and that's what sort of holds them back quite a lot. So, 
Let's um put together a quick top 10 here. I think that these characters are all very deserving of a top 10. Two, four, six, eight. We need two more. Who else? Uta could probably go there. Honestly, K Dad's very, very nice. Um, now the Karina are fantastic. And then you're very, very good too. So I think. Looking at the top 10, who do, who do I not use that often? K-Dad can probably fall down to meta. I think K-Dad's probably down. Um, he, that, look, K-Dad's very, very good. Like, still very, very good. A great attack boosting special. Kaido's probably fallen off quite a bit. This Zoro is still fantastic. But, like, the problem with these two units is they have to compete with Zoro Sanji. Like, proper. Um, Uta is still really, really good. But, like, Cerebral's kind of haven't had that resurgence. Nami Karina are uh, fantastic in, like, Treasure Map. Two, four, six, eight, ten. We need to drop one unit. Honestly, Nami for me is getting is is being becoming worse and worse. Just because like they're doing everything they can to get to just stop Nami. Plus, with Gear Five, like Nami's the kind of character that you sort of lose out on. I'm gonna do this just because like the the captain potential there is just really isn't there. As for the order, uh, I do think Zora Sanji is the best unit of the game for most most end game players. These two are definitely second. Roger and Odin, um, I do think are up there. Very, very nice for um, Treasure Map as well as speeding through um, 10 Star Kazuna and stuff. Honestly, I, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave that in the top 10. As you can tell, as this video has gone on, I've just been coming more and more over, over it, to be honest. I really wish I didn't lose that last track that, that uh, tier list and have to like sort of fluff this out. But hey, that's to be done every once in a while. Next, we've got um, Dofi, Sugar, and uh, Moria, and Perona. I wanted to keep these units last because I haven't really had a chance to use them. Um, but at the moment, I do think they sort of fit the bill of both being like meta units. Mainly because like you can turn these units into slashes and then you can run them on the quick team. Um, and they both give a lot of very unique buffs. Like, you have an attack buff, you have a color affinity buff, but the super swap of Dofi and Sugar can give a lot of damage with the increased damage taken and the weakening buff, which kind of has proven to be not being able to get around, and then Mori Perona give resistance down. Now, I would never really run these characters as captains, um, but I can definitely see them as, like, crazy-ass subs. Like, this unit here has just disgusting captain potential, but you have to kind of swap them in as captain kind of thing. So, at the moment, I'm not exactly sure where I want to put them. They're, they're subject to change. Um, but, like... Yeah, I don't know. Like, the the downside here... I'm actually going to bring you up. You're, you're more of a meta character, in my opinion. Um, I'll put them in the back end of Amazing and then subject to change. I wanted to more gloss over the, the worldwide anniversary units. But, obviously, I had to do that big shift of the tier list anyway. So, I apologize that it kind of got a little bit more scuffed towards the back end. Um, but, hopefully, you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to go down there, belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Night!